The ongoing Gulf disaster will end up costing billions of dollars, but some now say that a $500,000 switch could have prevented the entire thing. This morning, Clean Skies' Dan Goldstein looks at a piece of safety technology that's now used in other countries to prevent blowouts like we saw from the Deepwater Horizon. It's called an acoustic switch. It's like Wi-Fi, but with sound waves. That's how submarines communicate, and this $500,000 switch is specifically designed to work deep underwater. It tells a blowout preventer to shut down wirelessly when a rig's umbilical cord fails. Lindsay McDonald, head of engineering for Nautronics of Scotland, which makes devices, hopes U.S. drilling companies will buy his company's product, especially now. If you're in a, an emergency situation, all of these systems have what's called an EDS. It's an emergency disconnect sequence. Um, initially, you would send that command via the wired system. It's the quickest way to do it. There's no latency. If you can't get to that for whatever reason, or the umbilical has failed, you can send it acoustically. That's something the crew of the Deepwater Horizon couldn't do after the rig sank and the umbilical cord to the blowout preventer broke. Their backup system, the dead man switch, didn't work either. An acoustic switch might have given the crew one more chance at activating the blowout preventer and shutting off the well. That can be done from the vessel or if you've had to abandon the rig or you can't get to the, the wired item, you can do that from a lifeboat. Norway's oil regulator requires just that. Offshore rigs must have backup systems that can be activated from a life raft. That means they have to use acoustic switches, and all 40 rigs in deep Norwegian waters have them. But they're also standard for drilling in deep water off Brazil. But U.S. regulations say that drilling rigs operating in American waters don't need them. That means when rigs are moved from the Gulf of Mexico from other countries, they're adapted to U.S. regulations, and often acoustic switches are removed. There's nothing to say that they, they, they need to have an acoustic system. It's optional. And it's not that this is new technology. The Minerals Management Service did look at whether adding acoustic switches was a good idea in this 2003 report from contractor West Engineering Services. The Texas company evaluated the idea for the government but concluded acoustic switches weren't worth the added cost, as many of the industry had argued. I think you'll see the MMS commissioned that study, had some questions about the reliability of the acoustic uh, activation systems. Andy Radford, senior policy advisor for the American Petroleum Institute, says the industry argued acoustic signaling wouldn't get through, especially amid the noise of a blowout. They contended the dead man switch, which activates the blowout if signals are lost, plus using ROVs as a last resort, were more reliable backups. The existence of the uh, acoustic system isn't a guarantee that, that that's going to work either. So there is some question about the reliability of those and the, perhaps if the, uh, um, they may activate uh, unexpectedly is, is, the, is the concern. McDonald is the first to point out his device won't work under every circumstance. It couldn't have stopped the Deepwater Horizon disaster if experts are right and a drill bit was stuck right where the emergency cutters, known as shear rams, tried to slice through the pipe. The shear rams can't close in. If you can't close in and, and shear the, the item, then you know, potentially that you know, an acoustic system is not going to help you. But the dead man's switch, even if it worked, wasn't always of help either. The 2003 report found some companies were disconnecting the dead man switch because they worried the rams would accidentally be turned on and the well destroyed. In the Gulf disaster, both the dead man switch and using ROVs to activate the blowout preventer failed. Now, Tronics says the reliability of its devices has improved since 2003. And acoustic signaling is at work right now in the Gulf, carrying signals that help position the rigs now drilling the relief wells. Some experts like Sylvia Earle, an oceanographer who was chief scientist for NOAA under the first President Bush, want acoustic switches made mandatory. Anything, of course, that increases the likelihood that, that you can keep a problem from happening, yes, it's, it's cheap relative to the end cost. So far, Nautronics hasn't had much luck convincing anyone here in Washington about acoustic switches, even after the Deepwater Horizon disaster. We're a very small company and um, have a pretty small voice. Both the API and the Department of Interior say acoustic switches still need more study. McDonald says, however, he'll keep pushing, and he hopes it won't take another disaster for him or other safety companies to make a sale. In Washington, Dan Goldstein, Clean Skies News. 
As we said, the price tag for one of these devices is about half a million dollars. That's roughly the same cost as paying a crew for one day's worth of drilling on board a deepwater rig. Florida Senator Bill Nelson says the industry fought the acoustic switch, not because it didn't work, but because it cut into profits. The senator is now asking the Department of the Interior's Inspector General to investigate.